Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video, I'm going to be going over the various windows in Unity and just the general functionality of it. Now, don't get distracted by all the nonsense you see on the screen here. I have one of my prototypes loaded up just simply because that gives me the stuff that I need to work with to adequately show the different windows. Just a plain old blank project doesn't really have enough to adequately show the functionality of all of the different windows. There are a couple of menu options that I have open right now that aren't standard, and I will point those out. Another word of warning, I'm going to try to make this as fun and as energetic as I can, but I'm going to be going over the functionality of a game editor. It's not going to be that exciting. It's going to be a little bit of a slog. It's just what it is. Uh, like I said, I'll try to make it interesting. I'll try to make it spiffy. And on that note, let's spiff right on ahead and start talking about the editor here. Up at the very top, we have the standard menu bar that you typically have with a Windows program. File contains all of your scene operations, creating new scenes, opening them, saving them, saving copies of them, etc. Um, you do have some project operations here, but to be quite honest, I never use these. There are some edge cases in which you would actually want to explicitly save the project, but that is not necessary in the overwhelming majority of circumstances. I honestly cannot remember the last time that I had to click on Save Project. Now, Build Settings and Build and Run are two important options, especially Build Settings. That brings up a very important window, which will be gone over in detail in a future video, but this is where you load in scenes to be able to switch between scenes while a game is running. Moving on from there, we have Edit. And Edit contains one of the three shortcuts that I tend to use all the time. Out of all the shortcuts beyond the standard Control C for copy, Control Z for, uh, or Control C for copy, Control V for paste, uh, this contains a bunch of shortcuts, one of them being very important duplicate. Uh, duplicating game objects is something that you will do quite often, and it's worth just remembering that duplicate is Control D in Unity. The other really important option that you will find over here in Edit are the project settings and preferences, especially the project settings. This will open up a window that contains a lot of very critically important information. Under Assets, this is where we can create and do some basic um, asset manipulation here so I can create a variety of assets. You will not have in Vector and Hope RTS options up here at the top. That is because of the custom code that I have imported into this project. So you will not see these two options here. The rest of these are pretty standard. And you have the ability to show an Explorer, which will open up, well, an Explorer and show you where that folder is. It's a very useful way of finding the folder. If you have forgotten where you saved something, although this is typically more applicable in a lab environment. Game object contains one of the other critical shortcuts that uh, I use all the time. It actually contains two of the other critical shortcuts. Again, you will not have the invector. That is a custom a menu option that I have. Create empty. The empty game object is a powerful, powerful thing in Unity game development. Don't underestimate the power of an empty game object. Those things are crazy useful. So control shift in, yeah, I'm doing that a lot. The other one that I use a lot is align with view, control shift F, which takes whatever selected game object that you have and aligns it to your editor camera. It's very useful for positioning things in the game world. 
Beyond that, we can create various types of game objects here. Got our 3D options, our 2D options, effects, lights, UI, camera. And this is one of the ways that you can create game objects to place into your scene. Of course, game objects consist of components. And this is one of the ways that you can add a component to a selected game object. So if I wanted to have a game object that was going to render out a 2D sprite, I would select it and then I would come down here to rendering and I would add the sprite renderer to it. Of course, I can't do that right now because I don't have a valid game object selected. Okay, these next three windows you will not see. Well, you'll probably see this one. But Invector is from another asset pack that I got off of the asset store. And RTS you will most likely never see because that is custom that I wrote for this project. Tools you will see pop up fairly often as that is sort of where Unity encourages asset developers to place their stuff. So you can see here I've got ProGrids and ProBuilder, which are things that you will most likely be using in your projects. And the basic save system is something that I custom wrote. You will most likely never see something like this. Over in Window, we have the ability to control our windows. I will talk more about the window system in a moment. This is where we can access our layouts and open up a variety of windows and help. The main thing here is that it has easy reference to the Unity manual and the scripting reference web pages. These are very critical things to know how to navigate through and read. 90% of being a good developer is knowing how to look stuff up. Because there's too much here for most people to keep in memory. I can't keep all this nonsense in my memory. I very frequently go, it's like, okay, I want to do a thing. I don't remember exactly how to do the thing. So I'm just going to pop on to the Unity manual or the scripting reference page, look it up real quick, refresh my memory. Oh, right. That's how you do the thing. And then progress on. You can also access the various uh, Unity services here, the forum, answers. These are good places to get help if you're stuck on a particularly sticky question. Uh, check for updates, manager licenses, lots of just miscellaneous stuff there. Below that, we have this little toolbar here that has our various manipulator widgets on it. In addition to determining whether we're in pivot or center, local or global, and I'll go over the, exactly what do those mean later. And then we also have um, grid snapping tools as well. The play button will start the game playing in the game preview window. And you have the ability to pause and advance by a single frame if you're doing some particular sticky debugging. Over here, we've got a variety of little pull down menus that may or may not want to lag out on me. Uh, collab, collab, I will talk about that in a later video. That's basically Unity's cloud storage solution. Um, it's also their built-in team solution as well. You have the ability to uh, open up the cloud services here. <clears throat> uh, spec check out what account you are on. Um, you can sign out, or this is also where you would go to sign in to an account. You have your layers pull down that shows you all the available layers that you have. You will not have all of these by default. And then your layouts, which again, this one here, you will not have. That is a custom layout that I have. Oh, and you also have the ever useful revert factory settings in case you feel that you've just really completely screwed everything up and you just need to get things back to the factory defaults. And then you have your various windows, hierarchy, scene, game, asset store, inspector, services. Well, services isn't one that's usually up by default. Uh, project, console. These are the default windows that you will have open when you create a new project. As you go through and customize things, these will change. Now let's talk about the window system for a moment. Because the window system is terrible. 
and I absolutely love it. And yes, I make this joke for every class that I teach. And what I mean by terrible is if you click and hold on one of these window tabs, and it has to be the tab, not this bar area here. If I click and hold on the tab, and drag it away, I can tear it out from where it was, and now it's a free-floating window. I can also dock this window anywhere I want. So for some reason, I wanted this layout right here. I could have it. And let's put the console right there just because. And I can go through and have just a whole bunch of nonsense. Now, some windows you can have multiple copies of. Uh, this is a limited selection. Pretty much the only windows that you can have multiple copies of are the ones that you can right click up here in this area. It actually has to be on the tab. Right click on the tab, go to add tab. These are the windows that you can have as many copies of as you so desire. So I can have, you know, I've got two scene windows now, and I've got two game windows, and so on and so forth. I can just keep going nuts with this. So what's the advantage? Well, if you have a two-monitor system like I have, this actually, you know, allows you to use all of your screen real estate. So I am going to real quick switch to my multi-project screen layout here. And well, you notice I've got a whole bunch of additional things open now. And dragging it off from my uh, second monitor, I have this floating window that just sits over on my second monitor. So that way I've got additional information. You notice I've got three different project windows. Actually, I've got four project windows open. There's an actual reason for that. And it just makes it for a very, you know, nice custom setup. I've got my hierarchy, I've got my lighting, I've got my scene view here, um, package manager window, which is another really important one, so on and so forth. So the ability to customize the layout is really important. For my videos, I will typically stick to the default layout plus whatever additional windows that I need to add in for that particular moment. I might resize things a little bit. But I will typically stick to this layout. Now I do highly encourage you to come up with your own custom layout. Uh, they do have some starting suggestions. You know, they've got the two by three, the four split default. In case you were wondering why you would want to have multiple scene windows, it's actually a very common thing to do in level editing uh, to have this four scene layout where I've got orthographic, 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 and then a perspective view here. So I have an orthographic looking uh, down the Z, I have an orthographic looking down the Y, and I have an orthographic looking down the X. Don't worry, I will get to what, you know, what do I mean by orthographic versus perspective. So it's a good thing to experiment around with. You always have the ability to go back to default. And then once you find that layout that you absolutely love, you can come over here to layouts, save it, give it a name. And now it's part of your layout here. I can also choose to delete a layout. So I don't actually want that Meep layout that I just created. So click, it's gone. Uh, there's no undos right here, so be careful. Now, what can you actually do in all of these levels? Levels. Oh, lovely. Windows. <laughs> what can you actually do in all of these windows? Well, let's start off with project. Project shows all of the assets that you have available to use in your project. It does not mean that you are actually using any of these resources. It's just that they are available for you to use. Now, once you get a fair amount of stuff loaded in here, things can get, start getting very messy very fast, which is one of the reasons why I've got all of these folders. Some of these folders were automatically created for me when I imported assets in. Some of them I created. 
For example, I created this scripts folder and inside that scripts folder I have a bunch of scripts and I have three additional folders. This one being a special one, which I'll talk about later. And here, here we go. I got all my building scripts and I've got my unit scripts. You are going to want to do some kind of organization with your project here. Because, well, I have, there's a lot of stuff in here. If all of this information, I am just going to go ahead and real quick rip that off and full screen it. Just imagine for a moment that all of this information, oh, especially the polygon stuff. Let's look at the polygon prefabs environment. Okay, yeah, so I have all of this and 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 all of this all just in one big list here in this main folder. I'd never be able to find anything. It'd be a mess. It'd be a disaster. I'd you know, constantly be trying to figure out where things are and what's what. That's one of the primary reasons as to why you'd want to organize things in folders. Thankfully, creating folders is fairly easy. Let me reset this back down here. Mouse cursor, stop jumping all over the place. Thank you. You can either through assets create and create a folder or in the, uh, the gray area, not directly over a name, although I suppose you could, but that will create the folder inside there. But just sort of in the gray area over here, I can right click create a folder. And I wasn't paying attention. I still accidentally created the folder inside of my streaming assets folder. So another special one, which I don't actually want it there. So I'll just drag it back out into assets. Which is another thing, uh, this works pretty much like a Windows Explorer type scenario. I can click and drag. Um, I can't rearrange, this is by alphabetical. You know, if I wanted to toss it into icons, I could do so. I can drag it out of icons, so on and so forth. I can do the slow double click to go into rename. I can also hit F2 to go into rename. And I believe I, yeah, I can right click and do rename, although I very seldom actually do that. And of course I can press delete to get rid of it. Notice as it warns you here, that's a destructive operation. You cannot undo it. Now, even with all this organization, it can be a little bit difficult to find things. And that's where searching comes into play. So for example, if I want to see all of my prefabs, there is a pre-built prefab search that is going to show me all of the prefabs, and there's a lot of them in this project, that I have available. Notice also in this little search bar here, you get this T colon prefab showing up. Basically, that's all these search things over here on the left-hand side are doing is they're remembering these strings. So if I want to see all of the materials that are in this project, I can do a T colon material. I can also come over here and filter things this way. You can also put in fragments of a name. So I can say T colon prefab or click on the search all prefabs option and then type in floor. And now I can see all prefabs that contain the text fragment floor anywhere in its name. So I have base floor A and I have a floor and a floor and a floor underscore detail. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. As long as this text here is contained somewhere in the asset name, I can find it this way. And once I have a search that I particularly like, I can come over here to this little star here and I can save my search, which in this case, I am not going to do. Uh, you can also have labels applied to things. Unfortunately, as you can see here, nothing in this project has a label applied to it. Most asset packages do not use the label system. Unfortunately, you can apply labels to things. So I can select uh, this uh, 
thing here, which will be explained later. This is a special object that you will not deal with for some time in your journey learning Unity. But I can come over here to this little label button. It's very small and discreet, or discreet label button, and assign a label or create my own label for it. Oops, and every time I hit the space, it apply the label. Okay, so yeah, no, I don't need create, I don't need that, and I don't need that. Thank you very much. And that is the assets, the project uh, folder. Anytime you hear somebody talking about assets, select the asset, create an asset, import the asset, it is talking about this project window here. It is not talking about the hierarchy up here. And so with that, let's transition up here to the hierarchy. The hierarchy shows you all of the game objects that are in the current level or levels. So right now you can see that I have a somewhat small list of items in my hierarchy. Well, that's because I've got uh, these little collection game objects here that contain a heck of a lot more. So everything that I have in my hierarchy here are items, assets, from down here, that have actually been placed into the scene. Notice that we have two different colors of text. I have just standard black text with a black outline Unity logo. And I have a blue text with a sort of a solid blue cube here. This indicates a difference between a regular game object and something that is called a prefab. Prefabs deserve their own video and they will have their own video. So I'm not going to get into details on that. Just know that prefabs are very useful for when you're going to have multiple instances of the same thing that should behave exactly the same way with maybe some minor variations. So I have two different manufactorum for rations in this scene. And they are prefabs because the two manufactorums need to behave exactly the same way. They produce rations. Now, there are no such thing as folders in your hierarchy. But if you think about it for a moment, if I had... You know what? Let's just... Uh, do, 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 do. Can I tell you to explain? Band all nope okay I got just there's so much stuff in here that it is a little uh, silly but let's just pretend for a moment just uh, I'm just trying to expand out one game object here you now my worker now and take imagine for a moment that all of this information plus all of this information plus all of this information, plus all of this information, was all just in one big massive list, just sort of like I was going over with the project. Living nightmare. You wouldn't be able to do anything. It, it, it would be impossible to work in that scenario. It would also completely break the logic behind prefabs, but that's a separate issue. Now, unlike projects, we don't have dedicated folders. So what you typically do in Unity is you will create an empty game object. That's all this underscore ground happens to be. It's a game object. It technically has a position in space, but I don't use it for anything. The only thing this thing is used for is organizational purposes. I have this underscore ground game object, air quotes, and I use it as a container object for organization. The underscore bit, by the way, is not something that is necessary. It is a personal thing that I use that lets me know that, hey, this particular game object here, this ground game object, 
has no functionality, I'm just using it like a folder. That's a personal note that I make to myself to let me know that, oh, okay, you know, um, ground, yeah, come on, be nice, get next to each other. Ground and buildings are both um, folders, basically. And as you notice, you can click and drag to rearrange things. With an exception of the user interface, the order and the hierarchy typically doesn't matter. Uh, there's no impact to that. Like I said, with the exception of user interface. Now, there is a difference between dragging something so that a blue line appears like so, or dragging it so that way you get a gray highlight. Also notice that as I moused over that, it automatically expanded that particular game object or folder. If I release it here, it now becomes a child of that game object. And if I wanted to unchild it, I'd have to drag it out and find that perfect pixel, which is not wanting to happen. So I will have to, yeah, this is... It can be a little bit difficult sometimes getting things out of a giant list. So I'm going to have to drag it. There we go. Drag it up. And notice how now I've got that blue line back. And notice where the blue line is. So here, the blue line's kind of indented a little bit. That's not going to get it out of the game object. Here, I've unparented it. Again, this parent-child relationship and how you manipulate that with game objects, that is its own separate video. Don't necessarily worry about that too much right now. Just know that I can click and drag things around in the hierarchy. And if I click and drag something onto something else, it will make a child-parent relationship. And I have to drag it out to break that parent-child relationship. While we're looking at the hierarchy, let's hop over to look at the inspector because that's been doing all sorts of interesting things as I've gone through and selected different items. The inspector is going to work differently depending on what type of thing that you have selected. If I have a game object selected, which again, if someone is talking about a game object, they are talking about something in the hierarchy. If I'm talking about an asset, it's down here. If I'm talking about a game object, it's up here. So asset is in project, game object is in hierarchy. That is an important differentiation to make. You don't want to get confused when I start talking about, okay, so select this game object and you come down here to the project area and you can't find it. Or worse yet, you do find it because if I say select the worker game object and you navigate through assets and instead you find the worker asset, that's not what I wanted you to select. I wanted you to select this. That's the worker game object. That's the worker asset or prefab more specifically. So make sure you are paying attention to these terms. But depending on the asset or the game object that you have selected, you are going to see different information over here in the inspector. All game objects will have a transform. I mean, that only makes sense, right? If I'm going to be placing something in the scene, it's got to have a position within that scene. I have to know where in three-dimensional space is this game object. So everything will have a transform. And then beyond that, we add components to make things work. Again, the whole game object component system, <clears throat> more details later. You have the ability to collapse things. So I can go through, if I you know, don't particularly want to look at the transform or the box collider, I can collapse them. And, but then if I say, okay, you know what? I actually do need to look at my rigid body. I can uncollapse it, so on and so forth. Pay attention to these little arrows, by the way. Anytime you see an arrow like this, that is Unity telling you that you can expand it or collapse it. 
Same thing with these little down arrows. Now in this case, this is a fairly standard looking drop down box, so you're probably not going to miss the fact that you can do that. But notice there's a little down arrow here as well. You have options here, and I will go over those in a future video. And also notice just simply clicking on the title is enough to collapse or expand. And that can be a common point of confusion slash frustration for new users. You're, you're working, you're, you're clicking around, and you accidentally misclicked on your transform and you didn't notice it. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, where's my position? Where's my rotation? I need those. And you're just confused as heck. Yeah, just pay attention to that. And if it's got the arrow pointing to the right, that means it's collapsed. Arrow pointing down, that means it's expanded, at least in the inspector here. And anytime you see this little down arrow, that indicates that you have options that you can select. And that's pretty much the inspector. Now, there's some additional details on the inspector. Um, I'm just going to mention two options very briefly before moving on <clears throat> that are important. Pardon me. For some reason, my throat is just completely drying out. I do one-take videos. No, this is editing nonsense. And that is I have the ability, if I right-click on the inspector tab up here, to select debug mode or lock it. These are two very important modes. Debug mode gives you a lot of additional information, although you can't necessarily modify all of it. And locking the inspector means that regardless of what I select now, this inspector window is locked to that asset, which can be very useful for editing. And I will go over those in more detail as I progress on through the videos. From there, let's take a look at the scene view. This is where you do all of your editing, for the most part, or object placement, I suppose I should say. Scene view is where you do all of your object placement. So if I want to move this manufactorum, I can click on it and make sure that I am in the translate widget and move it around. Or if I want to make it bigger, I can zoom, zoom it up, make it itty bitty, invert it. Don't, don't do that unless you like really mean to. So on and so forth. Control Z, because I don't actually want to do any of that. So how do we navigate around here? Well, first, the tools. Let's hop back up here. I just kind of glossed over this one earlier. These are all of your selection tools. So I have the hand tool which pretty much just allows me to pan around in the scene. I have translate or move, which allows me to move things in the scene. I have rotate, which allows me to rotate objects along any axis that I want. I have scale, which allows me to scale things, including in ways that just completely and utterly break your scaling. And then I've got this special one, the rectangular tool, which is not going to work with this since this isn't rectangular. Uh, this is primarily used when you are working with UI elements and 2D sprites. And then finally, we have the Omni tool, which has all three of the basic operations. I have the ability to scale, I have the ability to rotate, and I have the ability to translate. These are also, by the way, bound to QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. So I will most often use QWERTY to switch between tools. Now I tend not to use the Omni tool primarily because the Omni tool blocks you from using uh, one of my most favorite commands which is moving things to contact, which is something I will discuss about in a future video. So I will typically use W or Q, do, do, yeah, sorry, W E R to cycle between um, translate, rotate, and scale. Also, partially because those are also common keyboard shortcuts in other 3D programs. 
This item here, um, custom editor tools. Depending on what you have selected, you may or may not have anything here. So if I have nothing selected, that's blank. If I have an object with collider selected, I have the ability to go in and directly edit the colliders. You will not use this too often. Um, most assets don't have anything specific. There's only a few of the, co of the Unity default assets that use this. Otherwise, you will generally tend to not see this used very often. Pivot versus center. All 3D models have a pivot point. In other words, in the 3D program, by default, which will be 0, 0, 0, a point is defined that is the center, the point of rotation that that model is going to work with. So for example, bring my cup back into the scene here. If I have my cup and I say the pivot is here and I rotate, I do this carefully because this is full of T, I am rotating around that point. So that's what the pivot is. So in this particular case, you can see that the pivot for this game object is right here at the tip of it. Center is a calculated value. Unity will take a look at all of the colliders and meshes that are associated with this game object and try to figure out where the center of that game object happens to be. So using center is purely an editor tool. Uh, the center of the game object is something that you will typically not interact with in code or Playmaker unless you have taken care to ensure that pivot and center are in the same spot. Local is another very important option. This determines whether we're using local rotation or global rotation. Pay attention to my translate widget here. In global orientation, it is matching the global orientation of the world, which you can see you know, this little uh, doohickey here, this little widget, shows me my uh, camera, basically. So my camera is, you know, this is the orientation of my camera. And notice that this widget here matches that orientation. Because it is currently set to global. It also has the ability to switch to local, which now it is using local orientation. So in other words, the forward, and it's Unity, it's a Z forward world. The forward's going that way. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, let's say that um, I've got this rotated in a specific fashion. And I want to place this such that, you know, maybe this is a ruined building and I want to place this game object such that it's, you know, coming up out of the ground. I might actually use both rotations here. So I'll use global to sort of position it roughly where I want it. And then I might switch back to local to sort of drag it down along its local trajectory to embed it into the ground like so. Let me switch back to global. Position it a little bit more. There we go. So now I've got a ruined tower. You will very frequently swap back and forth between center and pivot, global and local. If an object isn't moving correctly or isn't rotating correctly or rotating in a weird way, try changing your modes here and it might help you out. <clears throat> Continuing on with Windows. And these last few should go pretty quick because there's not a lot that I want to say on them, at least not in this video. The game window, when you hit that play button, this is where everything's going to happen. I can't hit the play window right now because, well, just real quick in another uh, window, the console, 
I have an exception. Um, no reference exception specifically. Um, so that is going to, can I clear it? Oh, I can clear it. Okay. That was a random exception that I'm not entirely sure where it came from. Hmm. If you have error messages in your console, you can't run. So if you hit clear and you still have red errors here, the game will not allow you to run. I can hit the run button, but nothing much is going to really happen because this is a test scene that's not fully set up yet. And sure enough, I got my null reference exception popping back up. Also notice that when I hit the run button, my entire screen went green. And when I stop playing, my screen goes ungreen. You can customize that tint, but basically that's Unity's way of letting you know that, hey, the game is running. You can choose where you which display you want this running on. Typically, you're just going to leave it on display one. And you can choose the aspect ratio. I strongly advise you to immediately change this to either a 16.9 or 19.20 by 10.80 because that's the resolution I tend to look at projects in. Um, if you are not one of my students, well, change that to whatever you want. But I would strongly recommend not developing on free aspect uh, unless you are looking for a really stimulating mental challenge in getting your UI to work correctly on arbitrary resolutions. You can change the scale. So if you want to, for some reason, need to get some like really close in detail work, you can do that. Maximize on play does pretty much what you think it does. If you hit the play button and that is selected, it maximizes out to take up the full screen. Mute audio. Take a guess. Uh, stats will give you real-time stats, which are estimates for the most part, especially for the CPU um, frames per second stuff. And then you have the ability to control what gizmos you want to see and how large do you want them to be. Again, something that I'll talk about in future videos. The Asset Store. This is a great place to get free stuff. Now, I've got, uh, again, a separate video in which I will talk specifically about the Asset Store and how that integrates in with Project down here. And this is where you go to get your free stuff. Or if you want to spend money, this is also where you can go to buy stuff. And that's all the standard windows. Now, there's a lot more windows. We have the package manager, which is a pretty important one. We got asset manager stuff, which is only really important if you want to upload stuff to the asset store. Got, you know, more windows in general, rendering, animation, windows, windows everywhere. We will deal with these windows as they become relevant. And that's about it for a review of just the overall layout of Unity. Oh, no, wait. I got distracted and I forgot something, a rather important something. How do you move in the scene menu? Yeah, that's just, just slightly important. You move by using the right mouse button to look around. And then while the right mouse button is being held down, you can use Wasad W. A, S, and D to navigate around as if you are on a plane. So based on this camera orientation, if I press W, I move forward, backwards, left, and right. You can also use Q, sync, and E to rise. You can also middle mouse click as a shortcut for getting to the hand tool and pan around through the level like so. Again, right click to look around, W, A, S, D to move around, and that is how you navigate through the scene window. Can't believe I almost forgot that one. Okay, now I'm done. Now that was a bit, a little bit of a long video, a bit dry, doing what I can with uh, such uh, interesting topics. But there we go. Hopefully you learned something. If this was useful, or if at least it didn't put you to sleep, maybe that's what you were looking for and it did put you to sleep. 
give me go ahead and give me a thumbs up down uh, down below and if this was overall a waste of time and you didn't like it very much well the dislike button is right next to it until next time